Hospital where he and his friend Sandy Hoyt would get together in their basements with their own little radio station. And although it didn't go anywhere, in 1953, CKEC arrived in Glasgow and they both thought they had finally had their opportunity. With about 250 big watts, they started a high school program on Saturdays that reached most of Pictou County. In 1955, Frank was working full-time for the station and started pushing boundaries by trading some traditional Celtic tunes for some newfangled rock and roll music. He didn't always get, his, get away with it, though. So instead, he tried to trick his mature listeners into accepting this new music by adding a Mick in the artist's name. <laughs> So artists such as Elvis Mick Presley or Bill Mick Haley, very clever Frank. In 1956, Frank decided to move to Truro to work at CKCL. While in the air for CKCL, Frank was still pushing boundaries with his pop and rock and roll music, gaining many new young fans with his various programs. One popular show he hosted was on Sundays at 1 o'clock, playing the top music hits. Now this was before YouTube or streaming services such as Spotify. Radio was the only time young people could find out what the latest trending song of their favorite artist might be. They couldn't wait for that one day of the week they could tune into Frank and find out what new song had made the charts. The only problem was that many young people were attending Sunday morning church services. Now, Frank had no idea his rock and roll music was influencing young people to pray. <laughs> Many of our residents at Oakwood Terrace tell me tales of anxiously praying to God that Sunday school would not go over time. <laughs> and as soon as church was over, they would race home from church to turn, tune into Frank's program at 1 o'clock. Some were only allowed to listen in if they had been on good behavior that week. So great motivation. In 1959, Frank moved to Halifax to work at CHNS, gaining many more young fans craving the latest trending music. In 1961, he became the host of, of a familiar radio show that you may remember tuning into called You Call the Play. The show aired from 4 to 5 in the afternoons, where he would play the listener's song requests. And one of our residents at Oakwood Terrace named Sharon remembers rushing home from school every day to tune into this popular program. Were you one of those listeners? <laughs> a few of you. So Sharon remembers she once mailed in a song request, putting a pink ribbon bow on the outside of the envelope in hopes that Frank would choose her letter from all of the others. Her pink ribbon must have worked because her request Pink Shoelaces by Jody Stevens was played on the air, much to her delight. Frank also hosted various other shows, including his own show called The Frank Cameron Show, and that played in the evenings. In 1964, thanks to the success of many of these shows, CHNS had 65% of the available radio audience in Halifax. In 1964, while working for CHNS, Frank was approached by CBC to host his own bandstand show. And so the birth of Frank's bandstand began. And I know that many of you are here tonight because you have many fond memories of tuning into this show. Maybe you were one of the lucky ones that were selected to be a dancer. Now, when the Frank's bandstand show came to an end, Frank decided to stay on at CBC. And in 1967, Frank left CHNS and went to work full-time for CBC Radio and Television. During his years at CBC, his voice could be heard as an anchor on the news, weather, along with various talk shows. Frank spent 32 years of his career with the CBC, and in 1995 he retired, but even after retirement, he couldn't sit still and spent another 10 years at CHNS. It was in 2005 that he was approached by Wayne Herrod, founder of Seaside FM, who convinced him to bring his radio personality to 105.9 FM in Eastern Passage. Any Seaside FM fans up here? <laughs> We're so lucky to have an amazing community radio station at Seaside FM. I love that it is, when you tune into Seaside, it's just like you have a friend in your living room sharing their time with you because 
they still follow that block programming where the radio personalities um, it's not a computer running the shows, and um, it's very special. And with their dedicated personalities and, and volunteers that, that work at Seaside, we have a, a wonderful station. So Frank has remained at Seaside, hosting various radio programs, while always playing music that resonates with his listening audience. In 2015, Frank wrote a memoir of his life, I Owe It All to Rock and Roll and the CBC, and in this book, he has included stories and memories of his life in broadcasting. The book takes its readers from Frank's childhood to his present life, while sharing many humorous stories, often on-air moments. Now, this book will be available for purchase in the lobby at intermission, and Frank will sign it. So you have to bring a copy home. I read it. It's such a, a great, entertaining read. I had so many laughs. And uh, definitely, Frank's personality shines through in his stories. So um, I'm going to introduce the next, actually, I think it's you. It can be unpredictable. That's why you need a reliable source of oil, heat, and service you can depend on. That's why I recommend Discount Fuels, because unlike the weather, I can tell you what to expect. Your dependable Discount Fuels oil delivery and experienced heating service technicians will be there when you need them. And that's a surer thing than the weather, which is as unpredictable as me. <laughs> ah, it's one of my fans. <laughs>
accepting this new music by adding a Mick in the artist's name. So artists such as Elvis Mick Presley or Bill Mick Haley, very clever Frank. In 1956, Frank decided to move to Trill to work at CKCL. While on the air for CKCL, Frank was still pushing boundaries with his pop and rock and roll music, gaining many new young fans with his various programs. One popular show he hosted was on Sundays at 1 o'clock, playing the top music hits. Now this was before YouTube or streaming services such as Spotify. Radio was the only time young people could find out what the latest trending song of their favorite artist might be. They couldn't wait for that one day of the week they could tune into Frank and find out what new song had made the charts. The only problem was that many young people were attending Sunday morning church services. Now, Frank had no idea his rock and roll music was influencing young people to pray. <laughs> many of our residents at Oakwood Terrace tell me tales of anxiously praying to God that Sunday school would not go over time. <laughs> And as soon as church was over, they would race home from church to turn, tune into Frank's program at 1 o'clock. Some were only allowed to listen in if they had been on good behavior that week. So great motivation. In 1959, Frank moved to Halifax to work at CHNS, gaining many more young fans craving the latest trending music. In 1961, he became the host of, of a familiar radio show that you may remember tuning into, called You Call the Play. The show aired from four to five in the afternoons, where he would play the listener's song requests. And one of our residents at Oakwood Terrace named Sharon remembers rushing home from school every day to tune into this popular program. Were you one of those listeners? <laughs> a few of you. So Sharon remembers she once mailed in a song request, putting a pink ribbon bow on the outside of the envelope in hopes that Frank would choose her letter from all of the others. Her pink ribbon must have worked because her request, Pink Shoelaces by Dodie Stevens, was played on the air much to her delight. Frank also hosted various other shows, including his own show called The Frank Cameron Show, and that played in the evenings. 
1964, thanks to the success of many of these shows, CHNS had 65% of the available radio audience in Halifax. In 1964, while working for CHNS, Frank was approached by CBC to host his own bandstand show. And so the birth of Frank's bandstand began. And I know that many of you are here tonight because you have many fond memories of tuning into this show. Maybe you were one of the lucky ones that were selected to be a dancer. Now, when the Frank's Bandstand show came to an end, Frank decided to stay on at CBC. And in 1967, Frank left CHNS and went to work full-time for CBC Radio and Television. During his years at CBC, his voice could be heard as an anchor on the news, weather, along with various talk shows. Frank spent 32 years of his career with the CBC, and in 1995, he retired, but even after retirement, he couldn't sit still and spent another 10 years at CHNS. It was in 2005 that he was approached by Wayne Herod, founder of Seaside FM, who convinced him to bring his radio personality to 105.9 FM in Eastern Passage. Any Seaside FM fans <laughs> here? <laughs> to have an amazing community radio station at Seaside FM. I love that it is, when you tune into Seaside, it's just like you have a friend in your living room sharing their time with you because they still follow that block programming where the radio personalities, um, it's not a computer running the shows and um, it's very special. And with their dedicated personalities and, and volunteers that, that work at Seaside, we have a, a wonderful station. So Frank has remained at Seaside hosting various radio programs while always playing music that resonates with his listening audience. In 2015, Frank wrote a memoir of his life, I Owe It All to Rock and Roll and the CBC. And in this book, he has included stories and memories of his life in broadcasting. The book takes its readers from Frank's childhood to his present life while sharing many humorous stories often on-air moments. Now this book will be available for purchase in the lobby at intermission and Frank will sign it. So you have to bring a copy home. I read it, it's such a, a great entertaining read. I had so many laughs and uh, definitely Frank's personality shines through in his stories. So um, I'm going to introduce the next, actually I think it's you, be unpredictable. That's why you need a reliable source of oil heat and service you can depend on. That's why I recommend Discount Fuels, because unlike the weather, I can tell you what to expect. Your dependable Discount Fuels oil delivery and experienced heating service technicians will be there when you need them. And that's a surer thing than the weather, which is as unpredictable as me. <laughs> ah, fun <of> my <laughs>
Surfing USA. I just want to jump and
of the audience, would you listen to us? Mm -hmm. It ain't rocket science. <laughs> and we do listen. And we take everything uh, that people tell us and we throw it out the window. No, we don't. No. No. We, uh, we have enjoyed now a number of years. I, I've lost count of how. But I just wanted to say something, Chantel. Uh, if anybody can pronounce her last name, I'll give you 10 bucks. Um, you know what? Aha, somebody there said, okay. Anyway, um, when you did do what did he? Uh, I saw that in, in Toronto when I went to see the Beatles. Okay. They had a group called the Exciters. And they were the first people to record it, by the way. Manfred Mann was a, a sorry number two. Well, no, he wasn't. He was good. <laughs> but uh, Do What Did He? And one of the women in the Exciters was about ten and a half months pregnant. Oh. <laughs> and uh, she was going to go any minute. And she didn't. She, she got through the song and so on, and they sang Do What Did He? And one other little incident in that, that's the first time I'd ever been exposed to that kind of an audience. <laughs> Screaming, in other words, yeah. And there was a young woman sitting probably three or four rows down from us, and through the entire Beatle performance, if um, Paul McCartney talked, hear a pin drop. But once they started to sing, you couldn't hear a thing. But she was scratching her arms through the whole thing. She was mesmerized. And the St. John Ambulance had to wrap up her arms after the show. I'm not making that up. Um, what if it's by our house now? Well, no, I don't think we'll have a problem with this. Nowhere near your place, you don't have to worry. However, anyway, uh, I want to I wanna say, here again, before we start, I want to say, Chantel asked me this a month ago, I had come and I did a couple of Thank things, you. and uh, she said, have you ever thought of doing anything for Frank's band, And I said, no. And she said, are you sure? I said, no. Wait a minute, we haven't done anything. She did this, she put this thing together. Now she had help, I mean, there's no question about that. But she put this thing together. And she's not, um, she wasn't born yesterday, as I said. <laughs> but, but, she knows a lot of this music. And um, I did, I had no part of this, by the way. She got the song. Music and broadcasting. And I know that you've had many years and many stories to tell us. Um, but I just thought we could start with your teacher in grade 11 and 12 told you a very important statement, a nice advice to have to pick yeah. kind of that. Well, his path. name was uh, Wilfred Virgil, and he taught English at New Glasgow High School. Now, they're not teaching English anymore. <laughs> I don't know what language they're teaching nowadays, but they're, they're on not the radio. teaching English. They're not doing cursive writing. I don't know. Uh, so what the hell are they doing? <laughs> Um, so I really was, don't know what the, where the education 20s. system is going to go, but I have uh, so my granddaughter, one of them, with me tonight. Her name is Zoe. Zoe, stand up for her. Right here. Hi, Zoe. Um, Zoe is uh, uh, turning 12, and God, she's almost a teenager. Oh, my God. What have we done? Anyway, no. Um, uh, Zoe is, uh, she insisted on coming tonight because we brought her with us for the last one. And she said, oh, please, please, can I come? Please, please, please. I mean, when they say it that way, you got to do it. Anyway, hi, Zoe. And hi. Thanks for coming with us. You're welcome. Okay. And I know he had said to you, pursue your dream. Oh, pursue your dream. He never did answer me. It was. was did he? I, did. <laughs> I had mostly nightmares up till then. But then, <laughs> but then, all of a sudden, I had a dream. 
And I said, well, I'm going to live this dream. Did and you so, dream that all these people would be here? And <laughs> yeah, that's right. I dreamed that all your people you could have would the rest be here. Right. It's pretty sad. And, and you know, I don't like that. You didn't yeah. pursue your dream. I mean, it was a dream since you were seven years old. Well, there were, there were two things about I loved about Wilfred Burchill. First of all, just his name, Wilfred Burchill. Yeah. That's a that's an English name. But the other thing I liked about him was that he pulled no punches. He said, Frank, you want to go into broadcasting, don't you? And stop encouraging me to do this and do that and do that. And they put on a uh, HMS Pinafore. So give three cheers and one cheer more for the Harvey Captain of the Pinafore. Well, I was the narrator because I couldn't sing a note, frankly, and I still can't. But, but uh, Wilbert Burchill was the guy who encouraged me to go into the business, and a man named Manny Pitson, who produced Frank's Bandstand and directed it. And we did stuff in Point Pleasant Park. Uh, we did, we sort of had the first, uh, what do you call those, uh, videos, you know, videos. But much music wasn't operating then, so anyway. Um, but we, we, we enjoyed it, we had a good time, and then the CBC uh, assigned me to do other things. As a matter of fact, I did a radio show with a guy sitting right up here, George Jordan, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know what it is. George, there you are. Okay. Anyway, George, and you know what? I learned a lot from him because he's a very funny guy. He, uh, wicked sense of humor. And we did stuff on, um, on the air, on radio. You remember radio? Yeah. Yes. A little box about that big. And um, we did stuff uh, that uh, I don't think the average person would do on, on radio. It wasn't, you know, uh, dirty or anything. It was just fun. It was fun. We had fun. And they're going to find out some of those stories in here. And they did, yes. They did. <laughs> some good yeah. stories. <laughs> and, and, they, uh, and we made fun of things like the Queen. I know she's not no longer with us, but... We did that. I remember when uh, Dick Hatfield, the Premier of New Brunswick, yeah. left some pot on her uh, on her plane, yeah. and uh, I guess they finally found it. Oh yeah, and uh, we we had a, we had a field day with that one. Um, but uh, and it was the same kind of thing that CBC Radio does, and do it, and they do it well. And uh, so that was it. Yeah. No. Frank, everyone that knows you knows you're a man of many words. Yes. But there's Where's a time where you had to eat your words. Oh, yes. Can you tell us the time you had to eat your words? I remember a statement that you told us in your book yes. you had made. If I remember, you said the mop tops will never make it. Oh, I wish you had brought that up. Um, I was one of the guys. Uh, disc jockeys. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I was probably the only one who said that uh, I played, uh, I think it was All My Lovin' or something by the Beatles, and I said, well, what's so big deal about that? <laughs> those guys are never going to make it. <laughs> I'm still chewing on those words. <laughs> yeah, but um, right. it was great, and once we did, and they used to call and ask for the Beatles songs, and when they wrote to you called a play, I saw this SWAK, SWAK, so what the hell is that? It said, sealed with a kiss. Oh, I said, oh, God. Um, that, that's how they signed their mail. Or they sent me postcards and so on. And you know what? Radio listeners, oh, there's nothing wrong with TV viewers, but radio listeners are the best people in the world. They really are because they're not seeing you when you're doing all this stuff. And you could be naked for all they know. I mean, were you I was, no, no, were you? no, 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 no. We never went that far. But, um, but radio um, doesn't give away your physical foibles, if you know what I mean. And um, we, had, we had one great, great time. And um, uh, just ask Jordan. 
um, we uh, we went to places that a lot of radio shows wouldn't go probably, and we uh, we just enjoyed it immensely. And uh, radio, uh, I'm currently writing a book on radio, but that's okay because radio is never going to die. That's next year's show. Yeah, <laughs> somebody said the other day, oh well, yeah, well, this computer killed radio. I said, the hell it did. <laughs> There's every radio station in the world is on the computer, you know? So if you want to listen to Adelaide, Australia, go to the computer. Absolutely. Yeah, and, and uh, so I, I, I love radio, I was dipped, but anyway, go ahead. Well, speaking of radio. Um, you want to talk television? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Well, let's move on to television, actually, because there's a funny story in your book um, that talks about you giving the weather report when a listener called in trying to figure out what Celsius was. Oh, yeah. Well, it was the summertime, and uh, I said uh, on the weather, I am not a trained meteorologist, by the way, I just want you to know that. Uh, and uh, I said the temperature is going to be 28 the next day. And this guy called, he said, hey, y'all, I'm from Texas. I said, well, good for you. He said, uh, you all said that the temperature is gonna be 28 tomorrow? I said, yeah. He said, well, I'm in Halifax and it certainly doesn't feel uh, that cold. I said, well, 28 is not cold. Not cold, he said. I said, no, it's Celsius. He said, what? <laughs> Celsius. Centigrade. Oh, I see. He said, so it's not American. I said, well, you know what? It isn't. Uh, it's Fahrenheit. <laughs> anyway, so. And then I remember he said, what? I'm from Texas. We work in American degrees. He said, I don't, I don't think that other, that other stuff is French. I don't know much about that. That's right. It's a, it's a French plot, he said, to uh, take over the world. Um, and it's, it's funny because when I said Fahrenheit, he said, is that American? I said, no, but the Americans use it. You use it in your weather. Oh, that's it, he said then. Yeah, well, I'll stick with that. I know that so well. I said, well, that's great, good for you. Well, you also had a, a, a funny moment giving the weather report in Citadel Hill. That was and funny. that was on television for all the world to see. <laughs> Yeah, Does anyone was, remember uh, that? Well, the Frank's TV. umbrella turning inside out, yeah. soaked to the skin, the C lightning behind him. Yeah, the CBC bought a satellite truck, or at least I don't know what they did, but anyway. So uh, it was a truck where you pulled up it had the dish, and you pointed it to the satellite, and the picture went to the satellite and then back to the TV station. And so we were up on Central Hill, my cameraman, Jim, I shall not mention his last name, for, but Jim was the cameraman, and uh, we were getting set up to do a hit, and I was all set, and all of a sudden, the sky opened, the, the umbrella blew out, and uh, it's a good thing the CBC owned it, because if it was my umbrella, I would have charged them for it, but, but they, they, um, the, the, the umbrella was there like this, and I was there look, looking like a deer in the headlights, I guess. But anyway, he, he um, uh, all of a sudden, lightning comes from the heavens. Now, it didn't hurt the camera, but Jim said something like, Big Zotto. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it, it was, yeah, I can't repeat it. Yeah. <laughs> but he said, but he said, I'm getting out of here because I said, so, okay. So we did one more little hit and we were out of there. I went home because I was soaking wet and I changed my clothes and came back and the producer had the nerve to say to me, where the hell were you? <laughs> <laughs> I said, I was changing my clothes. Well, I thought you guys would do anything for your craft. And I said, 
getting sick of death, the death with the cold? No, that's not one. That's not in the book. I said. Yeah. They worked you hard at the CBC. Yes, I did work hard. <laughs> I must say, um, the Queen Mother was uh, visiting Halifax, and uh, I loved the Queen Mother. I, I just because she was a Scot for one thing. And, yeah. uh, I, I liked that. Anyway, so she's going around shaking hands with people, and she had her little gin with her, and, and she said, uh, and she said to uh, Penny Longley, who was our script assistant at the time, uh, said, uh, "Where do you work?" And she said, "The CBC." And then the next person said, "CBC," and she got to me, and I, she said, "Where do you work?" I said, "The CBC." She said, "How many people work at the CBC?" And I said, "Oh, about half of them." <laughs> and she laughed. She had a good sense of humor. <laughs> but I mean, that, that was, uh, and that was fun. That was just fun. We well, had fun. You have a great sense of humor, and there's not a day I don't tune into your program on Seaside that you don't make me laugh. Well, I do it for you. You know that. <laughs> I mean, we want to thank you so much. For all your contributions and and just for being still that voice in our province that we can tune into and uh, we definitely have well as uh, Chris as my wife says if you lose that voice and you sound like an old man quit <laughs> so, and I agree with her I do I do agree with her. If I start sounding like 84, which I am, but if I start sounding 84, I'm going to quit. Well, we don't well. want him to quit doing. Oh. <laughs> Thank you, Frank, so much for being part of this evening with us. And uh, we're just so, so thankful for your presence here tonight. <laughs> I'm just learning how to walk, too, so... <laughs> And I want to mention, I forgot to mention this in intermission, but August the 22nd, here at the Life Branch Church, we're going to be putting on a show for...